Hey, is it a... So is it asleep? There is something about me you should know. In grade school, I was a spelling bee champion two years in a row. So take it from me when I tell you that this is an oak tree. I hate trees as much as the next guy, but sheer rage is not why this thing is coming down today. This tree is throwing a lot of shade at some fruit trees nearby and poor things are suffering. I'll probably firewood the top, but the trunk is pretty straight. So I think I'm gonna try my hand at turning this into a bench. I don't really know how to make a bench and I don't really need a bench, but instead of burning the whole thing, I think if I leave some of it, you know, sort of laying around in plain sight, it'll be a good reminder to the other trees not to cross me. Hold on just one minute. I've got everything ready. The area is clear. My kid is far away and I have my escape route planned. But something about this whole operation just doesn't seem ridiculous enough. You know what I think this saw needs? Now that is more like it. What do you think? Midlife crisis felling dogs that turned my 16 inch bar into a six inch bar. While I'm here, let me share a great tip I picked up from an old timer long ago. One I wish I'd known a lot sooner. I've got a nail in the tree and a terribly backlit plumb bob attached to it. This is called a telltale. Think of it like a windsock, but for lumberjacks. When the bob and that nail are in a straight line, I know the tree is down. If for some reason I end up with the line going the wrong way, or all tangled up against the nail on the tree, I know I felled this tree in the wrong direction. In which case, I'll have to stand it back up and try again. Not making that mistake a second time. Back at the front, fingers crossed, I hope it's the front. I've already gone ahead, measured and marked 30 trunk diameters down from the very top. That's my cut line. Nothing left to do but... Traveler 0069, Giggity, mission aboard. Resume protocol 5 immediately. Oh, sh... Okay, this is a little awkward, ain't it? Long time no chat after all. But I sincerely hope you've all been doing spectacular. It's been tough, I know. After all, we both said some pretty ugly things to each... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. It's just... I'm a little rusty. Some performance anxiety, maybe. This has got to be the fourth time I'm recording this, and I'm still staring at my shoes while I'm talking to you. Despite having taken a bit of a break, that doesn't mean I haven't been spending time in the garage. Far from it. This is my safe space, after all. And although this isn't the video I was expecting to come back with, well, lots happened down here. And the future won't make any sense to you unless I take a minute and break the ice with a bit of an update video. Get you caught up. I'm not a big fan of update videos, but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta The video I would planned to do was a 1 million subscriber house party video extravaganza. Basically a shop tour. However, there was a twist. To make it more interesting, you know, more than a guy sitting at a table waving his hands, I secretly selected a viewer at random and invited them into my shop. Participate, ask questions, shoot to poop. They'd be a symbolic stand-in for you, kind viewer, since, you know, it'd likely get very hot, slippery, and probably a little bit bloody if I forcibly packed all one million of you in my garage. Unfortunately, I couldn't hold up my end of the bargain at the time, so it's been postponed. As soon as I can get them back here, we'll pick right back up. Since you brought it up though, I'd like to take a moment for a long overdue belated thank you. You're all awesome. I couldn't have reached this milestone without you. Literally, I couldn't subscribe to myself a million times. Lord knows I tried. Thank you all for the emotional, spiritual, financial, meteorological, and lumbar support all these years. 
My ego aside, it sort of restores some faith in humanity to know millions of people still enjoy watching trades -y videos. And not just mine. The proliferation of maker-style channels these past few years I think is a good sign. Now, I did get my gold star from YouTube. It's nice. Maybe a little gaudy for my taste, but it's nice. I like wearing it around my neck when I leave the house. But what I really want to show you are these. Fellow YouTuber and gentleman extraordinaire, Jan Rotes, Rots, Roots, sorry Jan, made these for me. He's a machinist, a Mahovian in fact, and said he wanted to make awards for my kids, as they've helped to get my channel off the ground from the get-go. Honestly, I do way more than my kids do, but that takes nothing away from the magnificence of these awards. Kids absolutely love them, keep them in the rooms, top shelf. He's got a build video that in no way does these things justice, by the way, over on his channel at Roets 4.0. Go check that out, and thanks again, Jan. These things are gorgeous. Now, this has nothing to do with anything, but since I went to all the trouble to reverse engineer the dimensions for these felling dogs, I figured the least I could do is share what I learned. You may very well be thinking to yourself, what's felling dogs got to do with me? Well, this is a steel MS290 farm boss. Statistically speaking, you or someone you love is afflicted with one of these. Anyway, here's the bolt hole information. I know that looks a little unorthodox, but there's not really anything easy to measure off of here. What you're looking at is the relative location of each of the dog's mounting holes. You know, so the teeth or the spikes actually line up with each other across the bar. The dogs don't share the same hole pattern, and so that's what I'm sharing with you here. If you're interested, lay those out on paper or in CAD and take it from there. Make them any shape or size you like. Vampire teeth might be nice for Halloween. Sure, you might not have a CNC mill, but I bet they'd make a fun 14-day project with a hacksaw and some files. Or maybe 3D print them. Or, better yet, get the kids involved. Cut them out of some cardboard, wrap them in aluminum foil. You've got some great spikes the kids could chase each other around the yard with. All right, what's next? What's next? I could have sworn there was a... I bought a midge welder. That's right. Don't try to adjust your picture. This old Tony's got midge. If you'd have asked me four months ago, this old Tony, would you ever buy a midge welder? I'd tell you sure. In fact, I already have one. With two torches even. But if you asked me last year, no way, Josie. Some of you may recall I've never liked MIG welding. MIG. 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 Way long ago, in a land before time, I did a lot of MIG. Well, I got my fill anyway, let's put it that way. At which point, I got rid of the MIG stuff, put my money into TIG. MIGs always struck me as loud, violent, and very smoky. And it's still all those things, which I still hate. But gosh dang it if it ain't fast. I've been a TIG snob for so long I totally forgot how fast it could be. If anyone's wondering, and I bet they are, this is for steel, and this should be for aluminum. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Quick backstory, turns out this past summer I had a lot of railings and gates to make. That ornamental iron type stuff. I hadn't planned on doing it myself, figured I'd pay a pro to do it, so I called a guy I know, who I thought was my friend. And boy, you should have heard the price he came up with. Short story, things got heated. We may have come to words. I kicked my dining room table over, looked him square in the eyes, and I told him I could buy my own welder and steel and make it for way less. Well, turns out I couldn't. But I'm now the... But I'm now the proud owner of a Candy Apple Red HTP Pro Pulse. Except it's gray. Initially, I was just going to get a cheap, offshore, big box store MIG welder. Probably a no-gas, flux-core, shoebox kind of thing. I knew it would stink, I wouldn't be happy with it, but I kept telling myself it only needed to hold up through the railing project. No way would I want to keep MIG welding. Or would I?
I suppose you can guess which way I ended up going. I started watching videos, I saw the big smiles through the soot-covered faces of those other YouTubers. I've been super happy with the HTP TIG welder, etc. and so on. I got a kick out of this. There's a QR code stuck right to the machine for the video manual. I won't get into the MIG welder now. We'll cover that in its own video maybe. And honestly, I haven't even scratched the surface on it. For starters, this thing is synergic, whatever the heck that means. Who or what are you? I am Synergy, a holographic computer designed to be the ultimate audiovisual entertainment synthesizer. Does pulsed MIG welding, which I'm excited to try, and well, should even weld aluminum. But as of today, I mean, I still haven't even beat the first level boss on this thing. We'll fumble through it together some other time. And that, my friends, takes us to the good old... This isn't what it looks like. You know what? This is what it looks like. You're not the boss of me. Far and away, my time in the garage these past few months have been with the CNC mill. Getting to know her better behind closed doors, if you know what I mean. Wait, that sounded a little bit weird. There are a ton of things I wish were better. Trade-offs maybe I didn't fully appreciate when I converted an older mill to CNC. But the pills they've currently got me on are keeping me chemically positive. So let's talk about all the cool stuff. I've got a fourth axis going, sometimes known as the A axis. Sorry, sorry, I, I apologize for that one. Really, it's just a way too small rotary table for this mill with a motor on it. Took the hand crank off, made an adapter, put a motor on it. But it's a start. It's still not fully integrated into the machine. All the guts are hanging out, but I'm super excited to have this. Spent a little bit of time trying to get the backlash out and it seems to be doing pretty good. Granted, I've yet to try hogging steel with it, but you know, baby steps. I really haven't made anything with it, just cutting funny shapes. No, no, wait. That doesn't sound very sexy at all, does it? What I meant to say is I've made a ton of stuff with it. All of this stuff. Give me a minute, let me find- I made these Forstner bits. Yeah, with the no spin sh- Not as big a deal, I suppose, but I got a webcam on this thing, on the mill. Initially, it was to keep tabs on the milling machine, which I think has been making eyes at the die filer. But we had to talk about boundaries, and now I'm using it basically as an edge finder. It's in a printed mag base of sorts. That snaps right onto the corner of the milling machine spindle. Sure, webcams are nothing new to mock, but they're new to me. Super easy, just go in the screen editor. There's already a little camera object thing in the library. Drag it to the screen that you want. Set it so it's using the right camera. Add crosshairs and bingo bango, and you've got spindle bore vision right there on your mock screen. This is currently set up as tool 99 with an X and a Y offset in the tool table. Tool tables don't usually show X and Y offsets. They're usually just I guess mainly concerned about the tool length or the Z offset, the tool offset. But in the menu, you can click and show additional options and it'll give you an X and Y offset. Spend some time figuring out where that is between where you mounted the camera and where your actual spindle bore is, and you're done. Put in tool 99, center the crosshairs, zero the tool, then switch to the cutting tool and you're off to the races. That's an important step, switch to the cutting tool. I tried cutting with the webcam and not so much. I got a webcam with the built-in ring light. I thought I was being clever, but I never use it. Maybe someday it'll come in handy, looking down a bore or something. But for metal parts, when you turn this light on, it just blows the image out. And yes, I was just as surprised to learn this as you are, but if the surfaces are clean, you know, if you don't have it permanently mounted somewhere, but if the surfaces are clean, it's remarkably repeatable. Granted, I'm not using it for anything critical, but it's super fast to use and a lot less destructive than an edge finder if you pull some bonehead move. 
Okay, this is very likely a you had have been there kind of a moment. I totally get that. But I'm happier than I should be to report that I sort of have a tool cart now. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Finally got all of my tools off the bench and mill table. Still lots of empty holes, sure, but I like to think of myself as an optimist. Has a sweet pull-out shelf. Probably totally unnecessary. But let me tell you, really turned some heads when I'm wheeling this down the street. This, by the way, was also milled on the Maho out of one giant block of aluminum. Drawer slides, casters, and everything. And to think, I started this video having trouble finding words. Now, I can't stop running my mouth. But I think this is the last thing, for this video I mean. Check this out. Crazy, right? Looks like a teleporter accident. I know we were just there, but let's head back to the mill. There's no reason this wouldn't work, but I'm afraid it's not the answer we were looking for. This old Tony, purveyor of fine doorknobs and ball hitches to discerning gentlemen since 2021. Order yours with or without chatter marks, we won't judge. Is this something else or what? Sure, we've messed around with CNC lathe stuff in the past, but this thing is swinging a 5 inch chuck and at 3000 RPM. My real lathe tops out at 1200. Technically the mill has a huge swing. It could probably fit a 24 inch diameter part. Not a lot of Z, of course, so short parts, but plenty of swing. Only reason I didn't go with a bigger chuck is because of this 40 taper. I like having fun as much as the next guy, but I don't want to kill myself doing it. My next step is to build some sort of automatic tool changer. So with device, I could fit two, maybe three tools in here, but I'd like to make some kind of gang tool holder that either drops on the vise or indexes and bolts somewhere to the table. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it horizontal like this or maybe do it vertically, maybe tools coming in from each side. But just like we saw before in the tool table with the camera, you can set tool offsets for these, Y in this case, and when the G code calls a new tool, it would just index the table over to whichever tool it needs next. I'm not a production parts kind of guy, but I think that whole thing would be pretty hot. I don't know, okay, but that attitude's not really helping right now. Yeah, I had my index finger pointed in the air. Of course I licked it first, so I look like some kind of a dumbass. All's well that ends well, that's what I always say. Thanks for watching.